Hello nurses, this is Kevin with NursingCamp.com and these are my scribble notes on nursing in the NCLEX. Today's focus is on uh, cardiac telemetry camp and the shocking rhythms to defibrillate or cardiovert the patients. Based on my sticky note found on Instagram, Facebook, Pinterest, and NursingCamp.com for you to download. Okay, um, these rhythms. So the big thing on the previous lecture, I talked about rhythms that you cardiovert. And what cardioversion means that you're going to basically synchronize um, to the R waves, and then you're going to increase shocking that patient. And what happens is, is that you try to convert the rhythm into a uh, sinus rhythm. That's not sinus. And so cardioversions are alert patients. They generally will walk in and um, elect, have elective surgery, elective uh, procedure. And the, the outcome is to try to shock the patient. The difference of defibrillation is you are actually shocking the patient to uh, stop this life-threatening rhythm. And these are generally uh, dead patients. So patients, what I mean by that is patients with no pulse. And that's acute. Um, so let's get into the uh, nuances of the two. And... Um, so we have first, we have a cardioversion. So like I said, cardioversion patients, um, they're basically conscious. So they're going to come in. You're going to have to make sure that there is a consent sign, that you're going to tell them what's going to happen. Um, generally, they might be on anticoagulants prior to, because remember, they might have AFib. And so you might expect that um, they will have those already in place. So that's important factor to understand. Uh, you, will, you will synchronize to the R waves. So these waves right here. So, you know, P, Q, R, S, T. And this is the R waves and the synchronize. So you synchronize to that and then you will sh gradually uh, shock that patient to try to convert them. Uh, doctor only does this, um, but sometimes I'm nurse practitioners, but um, advanced nurse practitioners, but mainly doctors um, need to be present during this. And the main reason is, is because of um, they can code. And that's um, a dead patient. <laughs> so that would be a problematic uh, situation. Uh, IV is definitely needed, okay? So because you're gonna give them certain medications. And um, you might be giving your medications to slow down the heart rate and also speed up the heart rate. And that's all follow policy. That's in another lecture. Um, but understand that they'll need an IV, IV fluids running. So a paint and IV in case there's an emergency. And also for sedation. All right, so uh, oxygen. They'll also be on oxygen before and after, but not during. And follow policy with that. Sometimes you see it during, but um, generally not during. Uh, vital signs, so you get baseline before, you know, baseline, uh, then Q15 minutes during, and then uh, post, follow policy. The next is um, they'll be on a monitor. You'll be monitoring in lead number two. Why? Because that's the ventricle, and we just talked about that in the previous lecture, because you want to be aware of what's going on in that left ventricle and it should look like I said normal it's not normal at all but um, it should look like a normal QRS complex like I said it'll be requested or elected and you'll always tell the people before you um, shock so just like anything is that you will uh, say preparing to shock and then clear and then make sure nobody is touching the people because if you are touching the person you get shocked as well and now you have two people down and only one AED or Zol okay, and that would be a problem um, also uh, what else so you're gonna protect the skin they'll have pads on so you make sure that the pads are appropriately placed now that's different for everyone so you know they t teach that you know pad goes here and then one on the side you know so the patient is here and um, so 
but that is um, generally so if it's biphasic or monophasic all right uh, what else let's talk about um, defibrillation so first of all cardioversion is for elected alive patients patients who have uh, a fib um, SVT atrial rhythms mainly a flutter and sometimes uh, VTAC, but not most likely. Um, this is patients who have a pulse with VTAC. All right, so let's talk about defibrillation. So the next thing is defibrillation, and um, you defibrillate uh, dead patients. Okay. Um, so patients who have um, require shocking uh, VTAC, monomorphic. Um, V-fib and uh, Trossard's polymorphic. It's definitely emergent. And these are patients who have no pulse. So, you know, you walk into the room, you see this monitor. Does the patient have a pulse or not? If they are, don't have a pulse, then you are the pulse and you start CPR. Okay, you call a code and you put them on monitor and you look at this monitor here. And if you see V-fib, V-tac, um, you will shock this rhythm. To try to change it, uh, IV lines definitely okay because you are now an ACLS advanced cardiac life support, so you want to make sure that you have medications that you might be giving like amiodarone or epinephrine or atropine. Um, backboard, so you'll make sure that there's a backboard in place because you can't push CPR on top of our bed. So you need to make sure there's a backboard. Uh, respiration, so somebody will still be breathing just because of they are, their heart's not beating. They still need 30 to two, 30 uh, compressions to two breaths. And that could be to a BVM, and remember to hook that up to oxygen, full flow, 100%. A lot of times you'll see patients, sometimes they'll be bagging, but they do not um, hook it up to the oxygen. So make sure it's hooked up to the oxygen. Increasing joules. Um, now that's a stacking policy. So sometimes people do it, sometimes people don't. It's just be aware that it might happen. So some ACLS believes, believes that joules should be set at about 200 joules. Um, and the AEDs that you find at a supermarket or something like that are on a set level. But sometimes there is a biphasic versus monophasic um, zoles that you see in the hospital. And sometimes they set the joules to a certain rate. Uh, what else? Uh, make sure the leads and pads are on correctly. And we talked about that in the same thing with um, with uh, cardio version. And then uh, maintain that airway. So with the BVM, always clear, just like with cardio version. Make sure that you know you don't shock other people. And next thing you know, you have two people down. That's no good. And then um, evaluate the response. Every time you shock, you assess with them until the next time. And um, the only time that you check for a pulse after a shock is if you see an organized rhythm. An organized rhythm is a, a rhythm that has a P wave and a QRS. It looks organized. AFib is also an organized rhythm because there is a contraction going on. SVT is an organized rhythm. A flutter is an organized rhythm. VTAC is not organized. VFib is not organized. Um, Torsades is not organized. So only time you check for a pulse is when there's an organized rhythm. And that is what we're going to talk about next, called the H's and T's. Reason somebody don't have, doesn't have a pulse, but yet an organized rhythm. All right, my name is Camp, and this is Nursing Camp, and this is my sticky note on um, cardiac rhythms that you defibrillate in cardio. You, I can be found on Instagram, Facebook, Pinterest, and um, Etsy as well. That's it for me. Nurse on, we'll talk to you next time.